Focus, please. Focus. Hi guys. So I just filmed this and now I have to record it all over because it didn't record. That's how my day is going. Anyways, hey guys, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Um, please subscribe. I've been kind of going back and forth all day on which video that I want to record for you guys today, but I did decide on, obviously, the haunted apartment story time. So, here we go. I'm so stressed that all that footage got deleted. Whew, and it was my own fault. Okay. Anyway. So, um... I'm going to start out by telling you guys, um, like, the story of when I first moved into this apartment and why it was so uncomfortable for me at first. I love it now. It's my favorite place in the whole world, but it took me a little while to get comfortable here because I did experience a few things when I first moved in that were not really things that I could explain or comprehend, so I was really freaked out by them. So about two weeks after moving into my apartment, I got home from work around 11 o'clock at night, called my friend, we were on the phone talking, um, it was probably about midnight, and I was sitting on my bed, which is over there, just like right by the window, talking to my friend, and kind of just doing our own thing at the same time, so it was kind of quiet in here, and I was just kind of like sitting there doing my own thing, and I started hearing like a woman like and her maybe her child or it sounded like a little girl like and a woman just like moaning really like crying like very dis like very obviously upset about something so I like opened my window and I looked outside and like I could hear it very distinct like it wasn't just something like an animal I don't know it didn't really sound like an animal it didn't sound like something that I could just mistake as something else it sounded like a woman like bawling her eyes out like I don't know so after a little while and I told my friend on the phone I was like wow it like sounds like a mother and her child are like out there crying or something you know I was just like that was weird whatever I just closed the window and like kept having my conversation and went to bed so the next day I was, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, I wonder what that was. Um, so I went into work and kind of told a few coworkers about it and they were like, well, that's weird. Do you think it was like a ghost, you know? And I was like, I, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I guess I never really thought of that. But I mean, obviously I was thinking it, but I was like, no, there's no way. So I started doing research about the property and like my house because you know, they were like, why don't you look up the history, like, behind your house and everything. And I was like, okay. I might as well. I mean, I guess I was kind of avoiding it because I didn't... I live by myself. I don't want to know if, like, a murder happened here or something. It probably didn't, but I'm just saying. So I started doing research about my house, and the only thing I really found out about it was that it was... It used to be a store, like, right by the railroad tracks. There's actually railroad tracks right outside my window. I didn't find anything else out about the house specifically, so I decided to do research on the train tracks behind my house. You know, I was like, what are the chances that I could find something on that? I did. So I was looking on Google. I found an article about a death that had happened on railroad tracks near my house. So I was like, you know, there's no chance that it could be my railroad tracks. Like, no. I was just thinking, okay, I'll read it. I'll read the article. So I clicked on it, and I was mind blown. This article, reading through it, gave me goosebumps from head to toe. In January of 1800, around 12.15 midnight, a family was riding in their horse and buggy home from a party, and the father and son were sitting in the front of the horse and buggy driving it, and the mother and three of her children were sitting in the back. When they came up to the railroad, the father and the son stopped the horse and buggy. They looked to make sure. They, like, listened for the train. They didn't hear anything, so they kept going. And as soon as they were about halfway across the railroad, a train came and hit the, the buggy. 
and killed the mother and the three children in the back immediately. The father and the son were injured very badly. The, the father actually, I think, passed away soon after that from injuries, and the son ended up surviving. That alone was just so sad to read because it's so tragic thinking about something like that. Reading the article further, I found out that these railroad tracks actually were the exact same railroad tracks that are right behind my house. I don't think it happened right behind my house, but I, it did actually happen right on those railroad tracks. So I thought about it and I was like, what are the chances that it happened in January around the exact same time that I was hearing this crying outside of my house? on the exact same railroad tracks. So I read on a little further. Um, this part of the article was the most difficult for me to read. When the train hit the buggy, the front part of the train sucked up the mother and the youngest daughter and dragged them down the train tracks for countless miles. Was it their screams and cries that I was hearing that night? I really don't know. I, I don't believe in coincidences. I, I, I just don't believe in coincidences. I don't think it was... I don't think I would have heard it if I wasn't meant to. Also, I really don't think that there was some random mother and her child outside of my window one random night in January in the freezing cold crying at midnight. So to me, I'm leaning more towards believing that I may have actually heard a residual haunting. I really want to hear your opinion on it. Um, I do have some other things I want to talk about though as well in this video because that's not the only thing that's happened in this apartment but that was really what kicked off why I was so terrified at first to live here. I got home from work that night after researching all of that and finding that out and I packed a bag and went to my mom's house for the night because I was honestly terrified to be here. And I guess since then I've had a few more experiences. Nothing too crazy. I haven't really heard anything um, like in person. I was recording once and I actually put this part in my last vlog when I was going through the stuff that I got from TJ Maxx. You can hear it very... I would I would recommend going back and watching it. So it's right in the beginning of um, the part of the vlog that I start going through the TJ Maxx clothes. Um, I say like, you know, I went to TJ Maxx, whatever. And then as soon as I'm done like introing that part, I pause for a minute because I think, I don't remember hearing this in person, but like to me, like when I was filming and watching myself again, it's almost as if I did hear it, but I just didn't realize it. So definitely go back and watch that and make sure your volume's up because it's a little bit hard to hear. But in my opinion, it definitely sounded like almost like a man, like it was a deep voice or like a deep moan or something along those lines. And you guys let me know how you feel about that. I wasn't really sure how to feel. I'm hoping that maybe it was just something else. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, let me know what you guys think because uh, I wasn't really sure what to think about it. And I showed it to a few friends and they were like, you know, holy shit, what was that? I thought it was pretty interesting. Another night, my friends and I were actually sitting on my couch watching a movie and it was a scary movie. It's like the overall environment it was just, it was already like a creepy vibe that night. We had all the lights off. We had all the, the curtains shut. It was already, I think it was like midnight, maybe one o'clock in the morning. It could have been later than that. Um, and we just decided to watch a scary movie. I think we were watching The Bye Bye Man, honestly. And we're all sitting here just minding our own business watching this movie and I have a mirror over on my dresser. It's like a little, like, just a little face mirror. And out of nowhere, this mirror, it's like a plastic base that's like around the mirror and then it has a mirror on both sides. One side of the mirror, like the mirror part of it, 
flew off onto the floor. It didn't just like fall over. It literally flew off onto the floor and smashed. We all kind of just looked at each other like, what was that? So I like walked over. I don't know how I was so brave because I'm like, there were just broken mirror pieces everywhere. And I'm like, what are the chances that we're sitting here at like, I don't know, one in the morning watching a scary movie and my mirror just decides to fly off my dresser and break? So that really freaked me out and that just made me believe more and more that like there's something here. I mean, other than that, it's just a lot of like, I'm falling asleep at night trying to and I start hearing random noises in my house and it could just be the house settling. It is an old house. But the noises that I'm hearing are more like What was that? Oh, I don't know if you guys just heard that, but that's kind of what I mean. Like weird noises that make no sense because I know the sounds of my refrigerator. I know the sounds of like my toilet refilling or like just like the random noises that my house makes and those are not one of them. And it's not like it's coming from an, I, there are four apartments in my building, but it, every single time I hear one of these noises, it's coming from my apartment. Like it's not far away enough to be a different apartment. It's definitely mine. And that, that's, it freaks me out. Like, I live alone. It'd be one thing if I had a roommate or something and maybe they were doing this, but it's like I live alone in a studio apartment. I know there's nobody else in my house. So why am I hearing all these noises all the time? And why isn't it consistent? Because it's the most random times too. Like when I'm falling asleep or when I'm alone or when we're watching scary movies or it's just like, I don't know. There is one more thing that I want to talk about as well and this is a little bit deep and Kind of hard to talk about because I know a lot of people don't really understand it because they don't experience it I've experienced sleep paralysis on about 10 times since I moved into this house and For me, that's a lot. I mean, I grew up dealing with it and nobody really understood. I always thought I was crazy I mean waking up and not being able to move for like a minute to like five minutes like if you don't know what sleep paralysis is, um, definitely look it up because it's really crazy and maybe I'll even make a video on it sometime because I do have a lot of experience with it, unfortunately. Since moving into this apartment, I've dealt with a lot of stress and I've dealt with a lot of healing and going through a lot of shit. And maybe that's why I've been dealing with it, but I know that a lot of people wonder if sleep paralysis is linked to the paranormal and since moving into this apartment I've definitely thought about that. There have been a few occasions where I've woken up and it's almost like I can feel a presence but I'm so afraid to open my eyes and sometimes I can't open my eyes because if you've had sleep paralysis you understand you just can't. I want to try so hard to see if I can't see anything if I allow myself to open my eyes. I just can't like brave it. I don't know what I'm gonna see. I'm interested. I want to know if there is something else here. One of the most intense episodes of sleep paralysis that I've had, it still keeps me up at night sometimes. You know, I was drifting off to sleep. I didn't really, I don't really remember much after that. Um, I remember dreaming that somebody in my life that really weighed heavily on me at this point, like in a negative way, was in my house and they came over to me and started physically attacking me sort of um like putting their hands like on my neck and like sitting on my chest so that i couldn't breathe and to me that was so strange because i know i locked my door and it felt so real i felt like this was actually happening and you know i uh, i opened my eyes and, you know, I was, it was weird because when I opened my eyes, I was laying 
kind of like more so on my side but like almost on my back but and that's weird to me because I never fall asleep that way I always fall asleep on my back or on my side in like the fetal position like that's just always how I fall asleep so for me to be laying like almost completely flat but like a little bit to the side was not normal for me but I was like whatever so I, I opened my eyes and when I did, I looked at my side table that was next to my bed. I felt like I couldn't breathe, like I could still feel like there was a presence like s just sitting on my chest. And then at that point, like I knew that I had been dreaming and that like nobody really was in my house, but I could still feel it. I could still feel that there was somebody there. And I looked over at my side table and I had, I had a glass sitting on my side table and a bunch of other like little things but like I know there was a glass of water sitting there and I think I had my Apple watch sitting there charging and just a few other things and when I looked over there like the glass was broken and my watch was like off the charger and everything was wrong everything was in the wrong place and I knew that and I thought to myself like what's going on like, why is everything destroyed? I know I didn't leave it like this. I remember feeling, like, that fear. Like, what is going on? And then I woke up again. Which, to me, was insane because I thought I was already awake. And I, like, immediately jumped up, like, gasping for air because I could finally breathe again. And I looked immediately at my, immediately at my side table and everything was perfectly intact. The glass wasn't broken. My watch was on the charger and everything was just as I left it. I like immediately jumped out of bed and like walked outside. I was like, I don't know what to do. I wanna know what I experienced. I think maybe what I experienced was like an alternate reality. This is like, this is so deep and so hard for me to talk about because nobody really truly understands it. But like, I've never experienced something like that before where I'm seeing my own house in a completely different state like I know that it's not really like that and that there's there's something wrong and then waking up and seeing that everything's right again but I know I really feel like I was awake the first time so I don't know I don't really know how to handle any of it I think maybe if there is a presence here it's it's almost like they're trying to help me embrace the fact that, that I can sense them and that I can sense, like, otherworldly things, I guess, like, spiritual things. And that's so interesting to me, but I feel like I have so much more growing to do as far as, like, opening up my mind to actually being okay with seeing all that stuff because... The fear that I was feeling through any of this so far was so intense. I am open to the idea of seeing stuff like that. Opening my mind up a little bit more and seeing what else there is to see. It's a scary thought, but I just want to know like what else is out there. But I would really like to know how all of you feel about this. Um, if you guys actually think my apartment might be like haunted or just I guess I, I just feel like there's something else here with me maybe in like a different dimension or I don't know give me your opinions am I crazy because I might be I don't know let me know also sorry it's been so long since I filmed the video really uh I want to do this more I love sitting down and just talking to you guys I just want to thank you guys so much for those of you who are still watching because I appreciate all of your support so much. For those of you who have been supporting me, thank you so much. Comment down below and tell me like what you guys think because I want to know your opinions. Also subscribe, please. You know. Let me know what else you guys want to see. I do have a lot of good ideas. I just haven't really given myself time to film them. But I will be doing that for you guys very soon, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you guys think my apartment's haunted, because I'm really thinking it might be. Let me know. And again, thank you guys so much for watching.